Hey hello people welcome to gurukula i'm jay so if you are looking for a resource to learn web application penetration testing from basics probably you are on the right place so this video series which are going to start today help you to start your learning journey right from the scratch so without any further delay let's get into the video so this video is to let you know all about the fundamentals of web applications basically discussing of uh, what exactly the web applications are and how fundamentally the web applications will function and how the traffic will be exchanged for a successful functioning of an web applications so before we start our session this is an official announcement that all the attack methods and all the techniques procedure which is demonstrated or being taught in this particular video series is only for educational purposes and all these attack methods demonstrated or conducted in a very safe and an isolated environment and specially designed for learning and testing environment unauthorized hacking penetration testing or any form of cyber attack on any system is a violation of law and can result in severe penalties i kindly request all the requests to follow all the ethical principles while learning and practicing your ethical hacking skills by continuing to watch this video you acknowledge that you understand and agree to this particular disclaimer and act responsibly within the boundaries of the law so first things first what is web application a web application is a software program that runs on a web server and can be accessed through a web browser it allows the user to interact with the application over the internet so on one side we have the client the client is typically your web browser So when i say client your client is typically your browsers so when i say browsers it can be your chrome it can be your firefox it can be your microsoft edge or it can be your safari or any sort of browsers it can be any sort of browser that you can use and we technically call that as the client and on the other side we have the web servers and kindly to understand that the web servers will contain the applications or we can say that the web applications are hosted on this particular web servers these web servers processes the request from client and sends back to the appropriate responses the communication between the clients and the web server happens through a predefined set of rules and regulations we call that as protocol and especially with when web application is concerned we predominantly use a protocol called http or https which is an secured version of http again and there are other protocols as well like ftp smtp and so on but here in predominantly in this particular series we will be talking more about http and https and that doesn't mean that we do not have any other protocols there are lots of protocols and we will be discussing all those protocols when and where required and when we talk about the examples the first application is online banking websites which allows the user to log into their portal so that they can able to see their bank balances they can able to transfer funds from one account to other accounts and they could able to invest in different schemes which is offered by that particular bank so that's a good example of how an web application would work and the second example is online e-commerce websites like amazon flipkart ebay etc which allows the user to log in and they can able to shop any products that they wanted to buy on and the third application third example is social media platforms like instagram x facebook etc which will allow you to network with your friends you can able to share your photos videos etc so that you can collaborate with your friends now i believe that you know what exactly the web application is all about and the basic communication how uh, the information is transferred between client and then the web server now let's talk about the backbone of these applications that is web servers a web server is a powerful computer again a web server performs several key functionalities a web server will actually listen on a port for a request sent by a transport protocol and returns the response containing the resources so these are all these six key terminologies which a web server will do so when i say listen web server listens for incoming request on a specific port like waiting for a call on a phone line and i say port 
A port is an communication endpoint or it is like an ID for any services that is running on a particular web server. For example, you have HTTP protocol and which runs on port number 80 and you have HTTPS protocol which runs on port number 443 etc. And each and every protocol will have their own port numbers. And when I say request, a request is a message which is actually sent by the client to the server asking for a specific piece of information or action. Then talking exactly about protocol, that is the same that we have discussed in the previous slide. Protocols is a set of rules and regulations that governs the data communication between the client and then the server. And for example, we have different set of protocols as mentioned earlier. We predominantly talk about HTTP and HTTPS and there are other protocols as well naming uh, FTP, SMTP, etc. And when we talk about resources, there are actually two types of resources. This is, act this is the actual data which the client requested for. So any information that is stored on the web server is what we call it as a resource and this resource can be of either dynamic either dynamic or it can be a static data. So it can request for a dynamic content or it can ask for a static content. We will see a lot about these resources in few minutes. Let's take a closer look at how web applications work by exploring a web application architecture. And most predominantly we are going to discuss about the client server model or client server architecture. First we have a user. This is actually you sitting in front of computer or using your phone. And next we have the web browser. This is the application you use to use or to access the internet like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Microsoft Edge, etc. The web browser sends a request through the internet which is a global network that connects all our devices. And this request reaches out the web server which processes it and then prepares a response for that. And these responses are sent back to the internet and it is correctly routed through the web browser from where it was initiated. So this is an entire process follows the client server model. The web operations are uh, behind the scene processes that keeps the websites running smooth. So they involve the transfer of data between the web server and then the web client. Let us assume that we have a web client and then the web server and let us assume that how the data is being flown towards this particular operation. So let us imagine that you are trying to log in to your bank's web application or to your bank server and you wanted to invest some amount on any scheme that is uh, provided by that particular banking website. Let us consider that this is the scenario. Initially, the web client will actually send an HTTP request to the web server and this web server will first ask for a static data store. So when I say data store, I actually mean about the database where actually the information are stored and the web server will send a request to the static web server and the static web server or the static web database will send a response and this response will be displayed on your HTTP browser. So this is like you are opening up your web browser and then you are trying to log in. Let's take sbi.com and this is the URL which you have typed in and as soon as you press enter this is what the, this will be converted or formatted to your HTTP requests and that will be sent on to the static data which actually displays the content of the website which allows you to log in. So it will ask you for your user ID and then it will ask you for the password and then you will try to log in to your website. So this interface is actually fetched from this particular data server and this page, this entire page is actually a static content which is not going to be changed and this will be stored in a form of HTML document and this HTML code will be sent from the server to the client and your web browser will actually interpret this HTML code and it displays in your web browser in an understandable format. So that is what happens when you actually try to log into your website. And let's say, let us assume that you have typed in all the user ID and then your password and then finally hit on the login button. Then this particular HTTP request will be now sent to the application server where exactly the dynamic data are handled and this is where actually the static data is handled. So 
application server actually handles the dynamic data because now it has to check whether the provided user id and then the password combinations are valid or not it has to check whether the user id and password combination what you have provided is valid or not so this set of credentials will be sent to the service requests and this service request will be received by the application server and this application server will in turn forward this request to the application data store again this is a database which actually contains your login information and then the password details and all other remaining uh, data that is related to your account say your bank balance and the scheme that you are invested etc so then you will get a response back which means it, it it checks the database and then it will send a if your login id and password is correct this application server will send a response back and this response will be received by the web server again and this web server will allow you to log in to your another interface so after this you will be logged on to an another interface where it will tell you what's your final balance available and then what are all the, uh, and it will also show you what are all the various uh, actions that you can take you can invest you can transfer funds or you can um, make any schedules of transfers so that will allow you to do all these functionalities so that's how an basic web application will work so this is an a bird's eye view of how information is exchanged between the web server and then the web application server so up next we talk about web application that actually provides an interface between end users and then the web servers through set of web pages which is actually stored in html format and they are generated at the server sometimes or it contains a script code which can be executed at the client side as well all these details we will talk about detail when we advance through this particular course so initially we have a user and then he gets a login form and user types in the url and this url will be sent to the internet so here we talk about the url and this url is called as uniform resource locator so this is the actually the path which tells the internet that where your resource is located so here initially this will have few parts so http is represents the protocol that we are using and then xyz.com is actually the domain name or your server we should talk about the dns and all those stuffs to understand this but we'll see that in a later part and anything further to this is what we call it as the path for the resources and then this particular information is passed on to the internet and this information is routed to the firewall of that particular organization or your bank's firewall and this will be taken to the web server and as discussed in the previous slide you are actually sending in, sending in the login information this login information has to be matched with the existing database records so web servers will pass on this information to application server and this application server will verify the data that you have entered in the login form with the database management systems and in case if you got the if you have entered the correct set of usernames and password this is going to respond with the positive response and that will be sent back again to the user so that is how the entire web applications will work so in this session we actually spoke about the definitions of web application we have discussed something about the web servers and then the resources of a web server we have two types of resource so resource available one is the static resource and another one is the dynamic resource so static resource or the examples or web pages of any particular banking application and the dynamic contents uh, is actually how you logging how you make transfers and all those contents are dynamic in nature which varies user to user and then we spoke about client server architecture how the information is exchanged between the client and then the server and finally we discussed a basic functionality of a particular web application so that's all about in this particular video and in the next video we will be talking about what are all the major technologies that is used in web application development so stay tuned to guru club I'm going to see you in the next video. Until then, it's bye from Jay and happy learning.